Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome to my hobby blog. Today we are doing the first review of the Vinegar Syndrome July 2022 package. Um, I guess I am excited to say that we can only go higher and um, just better from here on out. Uh, the first movie that I am reviewing for this package is, of course, the Michael Finley shot by his wife, Roberta Finley, who I'm a huge fan of. She did uh, this film here, which I just recently rewatched with the commentary track and really enjoyed it, A Woman's Torment. But the film in question that we will be talking about today is, of course... Shriek of the Mutilated, 1972, I want to say, 74. This movie <laughs> was pretty dreadful. Um, this was not my type of movie, really, at all. This is a Bigfoot movie where there are a lot of different trysts happening. Uh, the costume is absolutely awful, but I think think that with the twist in mind at the end I think it's on purpose but there are so many things that could have been better about this uh, the back of the box here says that this was a classic of 42nd Street which is like the drive-in theaters and the sleazy New York cinemas and all of that something you would see in like Taxi Driver and I did not feel that at all. I did not think this movie was sleazy at all. I think the director is very sleazy based on the comments that Roberta Finley gave during her interview for this release. But oh my god. Um, this movie is your very typical uh, college professor recruits a couple of college students to go out to a island to then hunt down this yeti and slowly one by one they all get killed and then uh, the last few remaining survivors decide to uh, try and capture the yeti alive and one of which one of them uh, really looks like John Carpenter it really freaked me out uh, I was joking that he was time traveling back to do really shitty uh, cult films from the early 1970s before um, I guess he made Halloween or just after I can't remember the exact timeline but um, my gosh this movie was so terrible <laughs> I was not expecting uh, such low level effort in this movie because one of my first kind of reactions throughout watching this movie was that nobody in the cast seemed like they cared about being there. Uh, one woman who looks eerily similar to uh, the woman who talks about snakes and how people's names that start with the letter S uh, have the uh, something about snakes is from Suspiria, Dario Argento. She looks just like her, and I looked at her uh, IMDb or Letterboxd um, castings and roles that she's done, and it's not her. So I guess she has a trend, but after they unsuccessfully track down the Yeti, they um, spring off a story twist that I respected. It's very interesting I guess um, I don't want to say what type of twist it is because that would be a spoiler but it did not save the movie for me really at all the creature effects were terrible they never showed any of the kills and when they did show the kills like in the end they uh, it was so I don't want to say amateurish but it didn't show really anything at all um this one was just really hard i'm really struggling here to find more to talk about but with that in mind i think 
I'm going to go ahead and just go into the special features here because I have nothing else to say about this movie. It was very boring throughout. I was really feeling just exhaustion while watching the movie. And it's not even an hour and a half, I don't think. Um, it's 87 minutes. Uh, it felt like four hours watching the movie. And with that in mind, because <laughs> I have nothing else to say, I'm going to go on to kind of discussing the interview that was on disc with Roberta Finley, which was a lot more exciting to watch. But uh, it's called Yeti Again. And she starts, or before she even begins talking, we get like a legal um, little paragraph saying that whatever views and opinions that she has does not reflect vinegar syndromes. And I don't think I've ever seen that for a Vinegar Syndrome release. Usually they have that in the beginning of uh, sort of as the movie is booting up on your Blu-ray player before it goes to the main menu. So I thought it was very odd. And I think I understand now why they did that. But it is really funny because right off the bat, she talks about sort of her history with her husband, uh, Michael. And talks about how uh, he used to be in Catholic school, like a college. And he finished and graduated from there. And then when he went to go apply for a master's degree, he was denied every credit that he had done. And so he basically had to go back to school. And when he did, he met Roberta Fenley, who was in the music program at the time. And they hit it off uh, quite well. And... One of the more interesting parts of the uh, interview that I really enjoyed and thought was interesting is that they were making a film which I think is quite famous in the cult films kind of sphere, which is called Snuff, which I've heard of many times, but I've never really seen it because I don't think there's really any good releases of it, but... Uh, she that was her first time being a cinematographer for any movie because Michael Finley uh, wanted to shoot the movie in Argentina and so they went down there cast the entire cast and got all the characters ready and most of the crew together and he didn't want a Spanish speaking cameraman because he wouldn't be able to talk to them. And so he just asked Roberta Fenley. He was like, hey, can you be the camera uh, woman? And she was like, I don't even know how to use a camera. And he's like, oh, just press that big button right there. And it'll start recording. And I was like, that is so bizarre. Like, I understand his reasoning. Being that there's a language barrier between the two. But, man, uh... This movie is pretty early after um, Snuff. And Roberta talks about this, about how she really did not know what being a cinematographer was like. She didn't know the techniques. She was more of a musical person, which she wrote a lot of the music for in this movie. And when she didn't write it, she... Uh, I guess, grabbed various different symphonies and used them. And I could really tell that it, this movie would be a really interesting companion piece to Night the Living Dead because the cinematography is very similar, the music is pretty similar, and the thing with uh, Night the Living Dead is that the music that they chose was royalty-free. It was copyright-free, so they could use it however much they wanted because... George Romero wanted to save money on uh, that aspect of the film. And it worked out really great. I think the sound design and the music in Night of the Living Dead is great. But this movie, it was just all over the place. It was sometimes loud trumpets, loud drums. Sometimes it was very uh, calm pianos, which I assume Roberta Fenley uh, wrote those and played them because she is a pianist. 
And so that was just interesting to kind of think about uh, comparing that to Night of the Living Dead. But uh, there was one uh, part that was quite bizarre. But she talked. She was talking about her husband, and how she just basically said, if he wasn't making movies that were about killing women, that he would probably be out killing women himself. And that was just really fucking bizarre to me. I don't know why she would say that. I don't know if that counts as slander, but or libel even. But oh my god. <laughs> When she said that during the interview, I just was like, what the fuck? And I I, I understood now why uh, Vinegar Syndrome sort of put a, I guess, warning right at the beginning before the interview. And uh, soon after that, she goes into sort of specific uh, Shriek of the Mutilated I guess, not trivia, but just kind of thoughts. And basically what she said is that she remembers absolutely nothing about it. She thought it was a joke. She thought it was awful. Um, a lot of things in that movie, in terms of the set design, were personal belongings of her, such as the armadillo, which Michael Finley apparently gave her for, like, her birthday or something when they were shooting snuff. And then... She doesn't remember doing so, but she thinks she brought it to the cabin that they were filming. And she uh, just set it up in the frame, just right in front of the camera. Because it's very distracting. There's a scene happening in a bedroom. And there's a dresser, the armadillo is on top. And then there's like a bunch of characters way back here out of, you know, down uh, shot from everything. And it was very distracting. I kept looking at the armadillo, and she said it was a stuffed taxidermy armadillo. And I was like, okay. It's like, bizarre, but okay. Um, there's really not much else in the interview. There's some really cool anecdotes about sort of her meeting uh, Michael Finley, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I... This movie was very, um, very lackluster for me. And it's not even because this isn't my type of movie. Because this movie is just like any other um, sort of creature feature horror film that Vinegar Syndrome has released. I'm thinking of the movie like Zombie 5 Killing Birds. Um... Through the Fire, I recall, was sort of having a similar story structure, but oh my god, this movie was pretty terrible. And I, I talked about how I wanted to go through and listen to the commentary track, which was newly recorded by Roberta Fenley, but I just, even as I was watching it, I was like, I don't even know if I want to watch this movie again ever, ever again in my life. But one thing I'll give uh, credit to will be Vinegar Syndrome because uh, the original 35 millimeter print of this movie was considered lost at one point, and it was just recently uh, discovered again. And they fully remastered it, and it looks absolutely beautiful. There were shots in this movie that looked like somebody filmed it today. Um, it looked really fucking good is kind of my point. And I, I give big props to uh, Vinegar Syndrome for doing such a great restoration. Uh, that's really the only positive thing I have to say. Except, except, uh, they sampled or at least used a song called Popcorn. I don't know the history of this song, but I'm... I fancy myself a fan of the musical artist. I don't even know if they're an artist, but I like the music of Crazy Frog. And <laughs> one of uh, Crazy Frog's songs outside of Axel F is Popcorn. And that song is very catchy. Uh, 
It has that really annoying, crazy frog singing in the song, but the actual instrumentals of that song is really fun, really catchy, very uh, kind of dance and house type of uh, EDM. And this movie just plays it a lot throughout this film. And when it first showed up in the beginning, when all the college students are at a party with the professor, it's playing. It plays a song from beginning all the way to the end. And I was just sitting there just like, you know, just vibing, just having fun listening to it. And that's probably the best time I had watching this movie. That's only because I'm a Crazy Frog fan, which I don't know if I should be ashamed to even admit. (laughs) But this movie was terrible. Um... It's not even terrible in like a Death Wish 2 kind of sense in which I was angry about how the actor actresses were treated in the kind of onset and I had a lot to say about it. This one I really have nothing to say about it. And I talked about how I would compare this to Suburban and Sasquatch, which I still maintain, especially after watching this movie, that that's the best Bigfoot movie. And the... Uh, visual vengeance uh set that is coming for suburban sasquatch is coming in the mail this week so i can't wait uh can't wait to review that can't wait to give all my thoughts i will be giving so much more um opinions and facts and trivia and just well regarded uh not well regarded but high praises for that because That's one of my favorite movies. Uh, A big guilty pleasure. I'll give it that. But Wow. Um, I guess I should answer the question I always ask at the end of these, which is, if I did not have the subscription, would I have bought this movie? I think I would have bought it and then been very disappointed. I did not... Technically, I did not pay for this because I have the subscription, but... I think at this point, each release comes out to about $13 or $15. I haven't seen the latest breakdowns of kind of the pricing for these uh, this subscription. But um, I would have been very pissed paying 20 bucks or whatever it is, 25 bucks for the slip-covered version. And I want to say that this is the same artist as Master of the World. It looks very, very similar. I will show them both here. And then the back especially looks the same. So, I don't know. Um, Good job, artist. Uh, At least the artwork is really nice on this release. Um, It's just an absolute shame that this movie was a disappointment to me. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know, on second thought, I don't know anybody who has ever given a good review of this movie. I looked it up while watching the movie on Letterboxd, and I was shocked to see that it's at like a two, two and a half average rating on Letterboxd, and I was like, oh my god. And there weren't many, like, beyond three stars, or three stars and beyond. So, I should have looked at that beforehand, and... I guess, brace myself for the terribleness of this movie. But that is it for today. Um, I don't know when I'll do the other ones of the set or of the uh, package, but a haul video is coming soon. I hit 300 subscribers, so I'll have the live stream this week on Friday. I don't know what time yet, but I held a poll on my Instagram page and everybody voted for YouTube as the platform to do my next live stream because I sort of realized I'd never done a an Instagram live um, live stream. And so I put up a little poll, asked people what they wanted, and everybody voted YouTube. So I'm doing YouTube again. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. And if you've seen this movie, let me know what you think of it. Uh, let's get a conversation started. And don't forget to like and favorite this video, upvote it. Um, And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of Vinegar Syndrome, uh, I guess, release reviews. 
almost all of them for this year in 2022. But uh, please, everyone, have a great rest of the week.